If you follow my stuff, you know that I recommend the frame of playing life as if it were a game, okay? That does not negate the fact that there are horrible things that happen in life and, and serious tragedies and all these obstacles and things, but I am the frame is to be able to make you wake up and project life as if you were a kid, as if like, what are the fun things I'm going to do today and be able to create your ideal lifestyle, your most consistently happy day. All right. This is everything that my content moves towards. All, all of my content gears towards trying to make you guys as happy as possible and teach you all the things to be able to create your ideal lifestyle and your ideal day and leveling up through the game of life. Okay. It's a frame. The map is not the territory, but it's a very useful map. And the most useful map that I found for navigating through life and becoming happier because that's what everyone wants. Everyone wants to avoid pain and maximize uh, pleasure, be it good feelings, good thoughts. Um, you know, I'm not not necessarily ecstatic bliss, but you know, feelings of power, feelings of self improvement, feeling good in your body, uh, things that interest you. You know, just having as many things that you like to do during the day and feeling as good as possible, and having your state, which is your thoughts, your feelings and the sensations within your physiology be as good as possible, okay? And this is what the vast majority of people live for, although a lot of people are unconscious about it and end up doing things that sabotage themselves. So there are two really schools of thought in terms of how to be happier, sort of the Eastern uh, philosophy of, you know, you've got your Neo Advaita and Zen and um, meditation and, and, you know, we've got a lot of Western Buddhism that's almost becoming mainstream. I've studied um, Advaita and uh, non-dualism since I was about 15. I studied in university, I double majored before I dropped out in philosophy and comparative religion, which was the Hindu philosophy and Buddhism as well. Uh, major influences in my life, um, Eastern uh, meditation techniques and, and all that philosophy I really studied. But I'm seeing this stuff sort of come to the mainstream with sort of Western gurus, um, you know, seeing guys on YouTube, a lot of people who, who seem questionable to me. Um, an enlightened being is not, uh, it is a very rare thing. Okay, If you want to look up someone who's enlightened in the last hundred years, if, if there's anybody, it's Ramana Maharshi. Okay, but I, but there are a lot of guys preaching this stuff, and there's use in meditation, there, there's use in, in Zen techniques, there's use in Western Buddhism. But if you're not enlightened, you are still in this body. I am still in this body. I still, if this body suffers, I suffer. I still have desires for women and for money and um, to be able to live happy. And I, I am trying to live a middle way, okay, where I'm still doing my spiritual work. But I'm very much in tune with the reality of that, like, I have an ego. I'm attached to this body. My spirit might be... Um, you know, attached to this body, but if this body hurts, I feel it. Okay. And there's all, you know, there, there are guys who are pretending otherwise and who, you know, when you look at them, they're not particularly happy. Um, because I think that, that, that defense, at least that's defense. Okay. That's half the battle. Half the battle is mindfulness, awareness, uh, being able to take a negative charge out of an emotion by watching it, uh, by watching your thoughts disappear. But to me, that's, that's half the battle. Okay, the other battle is offense, and that's getting the good things in life and getting a good lifestyle. All right, and you got to be honest with yourself. Okay, there's a lot of guys pretending out there that that they don't care about that stuff, but that's just because they've given up. All right, if you're really serious, okay, go to, go to a monastery and do that. Do meditation 24 seven. You can find one here in Thailand where and, and they are serious. Okay, they've given up all their worldly possessions and they're they're doing that 24 seven, trying to become enlightened. If you're really serious about it, you know that could be the move. Okay. But if you are still engaged in this world, like be honest with yourself. All right. I'm not, I'm still attached to a lot of things. And, and, you know, 20 years of study has not changed that has not changed that those deep level attachments. All right. So I'm trying to, I'm still working on the spiritual stuff. I'm still praying. I'm still meditating, but I'm still working within what, what my actual reality is. Okay. And, and if people, you know, could ask, does Will have a big ego? I absolutely do. Absolutely. Okay. And that's why you have to have a good offense. Okay. Zen meditation is defense, but when rent is due and fun is to be had and women are to be seduced, don't, don't lie to yourself that you don't care about those things. Okay. 
don't just meditate and be aware of the pain. Remove the structural, remove the pain, create the structural change. The example I always use is like, it's great to be able to um, meditate and, and be aware of the pain, but put a knife through your leg and see, see how aware and how mindful you're going to be, okay? You're going to be running around trying to get that knife out. And it's the same thing where a lot of guys will use this stuff as an excuse not to fix personal issues or not to fix structural issues about their life. What structural issues that you can that you can change. Like you would be shocked at how much of your problems and how much of, you know, if you're drifting into depression or all these different things, you can solve by structurally changing your life. By getting up early, by getting your diet right, um, by getting in shape, by uh, creating a business that, that gives you purpose for work, to move somewhere warm, uh, to have the same schedule every day creates massive changes. I mean, that and, and the positive thinking and personal development has by far made me happier than that um, self-analysis and type of study. If anything, oftentimes I'll, you know, the self-analysis can lead me to a worse mood because you're opening your mind to thoughts, which also opens your mind to negative thoughts, right? Because you're, as opposed to having that offense out there where you're, you're still blocking them and, and reframing those thoughts into something positive. Okay. People often turn to Eastern meditation and philosophy when they're depressed. I did when I was 15 and I was, I was, you know, I was like, what is this world? Why am I here? What is my purpose? You know, and, and I, I, I couldn't see it. And Eastern meditation is, is where I turned to sort of get a better grasp of things. Okay. But what eventually really upgraded the quality of my life was, was good old fashioned American positive thinking. Okay, your Tony Robbins stuff, your Grant Cardone stuff, your the stuff that I do, the motivational stuff, the creating structural changes in your life, the taking massive action and not negating that as, oh, it's just some type of, you know, phenomena of the world. Like, no, this stuff is really there. There, There is a world. Okay, you know, it is there's. There's, this wall is a physical reality. There's, that bus can physically hit you and put you into a lot of pain. 